Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Travis, uh, and I'm going to talk today about using Haskell for composable type site database queries uh, using a library I've been working on for the past few years called Beam. Um, so, one of the things I think really great about uh, really great about Haskell is that um, we can do this thing called composing values together. Uh, and basically, what this idea is we take small values which are easy to reason about. We take a function or an operator and we use that on two uh, values and we get a bigger value. And because we know the properties of the smaller one and the operator, we can uh, understand the larger one. So, for example, IO, if you have two IO actions, I, A, and B, you want to do them one after each other, you can use the uh, double or greater than sign operator. If we have something from async, like concurrently, uh, we want them to do uh, the left hand side and the right hand side at the same time and apply the right to the left, then we can use app. If it's indicative, we have diagrams from like the diagrams packet. If you want to put them next to each other, you can use something like ASAP. So there's this idea that we can take two small things, put them together, and get something more complicated. So uh, those are very abstract examples. I want to talk to you about a real world use case, which is uh, database queries. So uh, most databases today are relational, uh, despite what a lot of people want to not happen. Um, and we have a language called SQL, which we can use to uh, query them. So in this case, uh, for those of you familiar, we're getting all the data from a table called artists. In this case, we're representing musical artists whose name looks or ends with curry. And so if we run that, we might get something that looks like this. Table, some results, whatever. Now, if you want to go ahead and look up uh, musical albums by those artists, you might say, given an artist ID, I want to look at all the albums uh, whose artist ID matches uh, whichever one. So we might have 30 or 76 in this case. And if you do that, we'll get some other data back. Again, this return table, this also returns a table here. Uh, and so we can see we have two things producing the same thing, and now we want to put them together. Uh, but if we try to put them together using SQL, it's not as simple as Haskell, where you just put the signal operator between and get a bigger value. We kind of have to figure out what we want to mean. So in this case, it's a join. And now we have to uh, take this query and convert it into like this join thing. It's not immediately obvious where each thing here comes from in these two queries. So SQL semantically is composable, but really, when it comes to syntax, it's much more uh, convoluted. So uh, I made the argument that Haskell uh, is really good at composability. So let's see if we can uh, take these two queries, put them into something Haskell-like, and then use that as an inspiration for a, a database DSL. So the first thing I'm going to do is looking at this given an artist ID. Whenever I see something where I have a placeholder, I'm saying given something, I want to use a function. So that's what we want to do in Haskell. Um, I'm going to make it so that we now have this query here, parameterized by artist with the lambda abstraction. I decided to give it the entire artist and select the artist ID using record selecting. Uh, so uh, now we take a look at the types here. We can make this as a query returning artist, this as a function from an artist to a query from an album. And just for the sake of making things simple, I just want to return just the albums. So for those of you who are familiar with uh, Haskell monads, we'll see you know, MA to A to MB. Want MB, so what operator would go there? That would be fine, which is really nice. Okay, so we get that. Uh, of course, in the original example, I wanted to put the artist and the album next to each other, so if we we're just going to follow the types. We you know, bind again, and we have one thing called pure, which just gives you the artist and the album together as a tuple. This makes sense, it kind of has the right type that we expect. Uh, but of course, we saw the SQL snippets in our code, we can get rid of those too. So the next thing we want to take a look at is these where clauses. Uh, when I think of I want to get all the data where something and it has to like make a filter. So let's do that. Uh, I'm thinking where we're going to filters, just using Haskell's syntax very directly. Um, and finally, the selects here are kind of the most basic selects you can have is take all the data from the table, give it to uh, whatever function you're doing to. So we'll take those. We'll assume we have a primitive called all, which just does that for us. And in this case, the database uh, that I'm using is a sample database called Chinna, which is just a record store database. Uh, so we have this, We've gone from totally SQL to totally Haskell now. Uh, of course, this is not really a Haskell expression, so let's make it into a Haskell expression. Uh, we do that. A little complicated with all the operators. Luckily, we all know Haskell has this one called do notation, uh, which will make things look much prettier. So now, we have two queries, whereas in SQL, when we put them together, we had to change the syntax entirely. In Haskell, we can just go 
one, two, bind them using the normal magnetic bind, and then use pure, put them together just like we would want. Uh, it's much simple, simple to understand. You can actually factor all these out uh, and then uh, use, reuse them. So the answer is, can we do this in real life? Uh, and I'd say the answer is yes. Um, so uh, just to give an overview of Beam, it's a common interface uh, embedded DSL for accessing relational data. Uh, one of the things I really want us to do is to have it play nicely with Haskell types uh, and type inference, which is really important for me. Uh, I want it to be able to automatically generate marshaling code from uh, row types. Uh, and finally, I want to be able to have it work against multiple backends. We support quite a few backends, Postgres, SQLite, MySQL, Firebird is maintained separately, and I'm working on a SQL Server backend as well. Um, Okay, so let's take a look at like what does a uh, schema type look like in Beam. Uh, so one of the things that we need to be able to do is we need to, be able to talk about uh, rows uh, at different levels of abstraction. So for example, we want to be able to have rows containing actual Haskell values. We want to be able to talk about rows containing like SQL expressions representing values to be computed. So in order to do that, we can't use the same type as Haskell uh, will do that. Um, so we have to do is have to like kind of pull it out. Uh, Many people parameterize their data by like a containing functor. So that we're exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make things a little bit nicer by letting us use them as normal Haskell data types. So looking at an artist table containing an artist ID and an artist name, you can see that artist ID is a table containing an integer and a text field. There's this column or syntax I'll show you about uh, later on. It's basically totally convenient. You can get rid of it and previous beam library you did. Then you have to manually unwrap all your functors. Uh, so I'll show you that. Uh, Beam uses generics to all the uh, instance instantiation and convenience functions for us. You don't have to do it, you can do it all yourself, but I recommend not. Um, album here is just, again, 30 bit integer text with a title and then primary key linking it back to artists. I'll talk about this later. But let's take a look at columnar. So, columnar is this type family uh, where columnar identity, identity is the functor that just maps uh, whatever to itself, but because of GHCs uh, or Haskell's, I guess. A uh, new type system, you have to manually unwrap these values. So, columnar identity x is just equal to x, fx equals fx. Uh, and so, if you take a look at what happens when you parameterize markets by identity, then we get, uh, you know, we substitute f everywhere. However, because of the type equivalence here, when we actually go to use this, uh, we can treat it as if uh, RST identity looked like that, which is your normal Haskell type. And in fact, uh, I take the convention where I prefix or suffix all my beam type by T for table. Uh, and then I just define these type synonym instances here, uh, artists and album, and I can use them just like regular Haskell types uh, and it's solved. If everything works out as you'd expect. Um, so you have normal Haskell records that can be used at the Haskell level and uh, as we'll see later on at the SQL level, uh, which is kind of nice. So then going back to artists, we also want to be able to drive uh, some information uh, for relational access, one of the main things is having a primary key. So we have this table type, uh, <coughs> type class, which includes this associated data type. For each table, a primary key, as well as function to extract the primary key from uh, a value with the table. Uh, and then again, we can also do the same thing we did with the uh, table type with the primary key type by parameterizing it by identity. Okay, so once you have all your tables, then you want to put them all into a database. A database is actually a collection of entities. Uh, as we just heard about, you know, databases contain domain types, unions, all of those things. Beam supports uh, domains and might support unions too, although unions are kind of subset of domain types. Uh, and if you uh, stick to tables, tables are also an entity, so we do that. Stick them all to the database. Again, we derive generic, uh, which is great. Beam derives all the accessing code for us. Um, so that's the database types. Now we need to look at queries and expressions. Uh, there's a few caveats here because expressions and queries are kind of complicated. We cannot use um, variables freely, uh, monadically the way we would in Haskell where we just stick values anywhere. One example is, whereas in Haskell we would be able to do something like we take an album and we, you know, correct and we subquery. Uh, using it, we can't actually do that directly in SQL because as you can see here, you have an inner join with a subquery. This A isn't always uh, accessible here. Some backends allow it, not all will do. Um, you can't do things like aggregate over an aggregate uh, because, again, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but uh, speaking of types, like if you aren't careful, you might be able to construct a value like this. We want to make sure we cannot do that. Finally, we want to be able to make sure our types work on multiple backends because backends have different syntaxes. And we want to make sure that we can express all those differences in Haskell. So for us, uh, the query and execution types can look kind of complicated, but they're really not. Um, each query type 
is parameter or create value is parameterized by a syntax corresponding to the backend, SQLite, Postgres, MySQL, whatever. The particular database you want to access. S here refers to a scoping uh, variable. So if you're familiar with with the ST monad, it also uses an S parameter to limit the scope where things can escape. And finally, the result of the query, the tie row type. Expression, same thing. The context here refers to whether it's in an aggregate or a group. We also support window functions and things, so it goes with that. Syntax is again this part here, which backend it's on. S, the same parameter, it must match. And finally, the exact type, uh, this being a scalar type. So that's an expression. Okay, so I'm going to show you some examples here. Um, so I have this. First, let's look at our. Uh, let's look at our actual example. So I gave you the example of two artists and the album thing. So with Beam, uh, in my sorry, in my example, I used Haskell filter uh, and Haskell uh, equals. Unfortunately, we can't. The types aren't as general as I like them to be, uh, and they, that's probably a good thing. So uh, we have this convention of Beam of suffixing all our functions with underscore and all our operators with dot. Uh, and so that's all down here. Uh, and of course, taking account of the scoping rules based on the module patterns. So, so let's go ahead and run this example function. Uh, Can you increase the font size? Right? Oh, yes. Sorry. Is that better? Yes. It was. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at that. It's exactly what we had. Um, Except here, instead of using, uh, I use album artist matches the primary key uh, just to get the types to match. It's semantically the same thing. So let's take a look and see if we can run that. Oh, and I'll make this font size bigger too, I guess. Um, oops. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this example. Yeah, Command Shift Plus will do it. Yeah, it's not working for some reason though. Yeah. So, um, okay, so I have two functions, two functions I define for running it in SQLite and Postgres. We'll take a look at each. Um, so in order to run a select, we do run select printing list, we run a list. And finally, select takes a queue and turns it into a select statement. So we're going to use that. Uh, here, we parameterize it by the name that we want to look up. We're going to do that. Got my parentheses right. All right, so. Uh, I made it so that it prints out the SQL statement that we're going to run it, and then uh, I'll end it to run it. So as you can see, it took our inner join expressed syntactically as two different uh, but similar structured things, turned it into a SQL inner join that doesn't have the same syntactic structure but the same meaning, uh, and we're going to go ahead and now run this. So it's beautiful. Look at that. I've inserted some fake values here in my Postgres database, uh, so we get uh, what we'd expect, which is an, an artist uh, along with uh, artists along with albums here uh, as a pair. I want to motiv motivate some uh, more things. So, like if you take a look down here, uh, I'm written this thing where I want to motivate why you might want composability. So, uh, let's see, I wrote this little thing here where we have this uh, query some type here for different queries you might get this from our website. Uh, and then I back out a ton of like uh, uh, Sorry, relationships like track spot by a certain customer. These are all joins here, and like as you can see, they all compose quite well. So uh, I want to leave a question, but I'll show you an example. Okay, so we're going to run this in Postgres. Uh, only all the customers who match these predicates here. Customers brought brought something in with the John or Jazz has support rep named John. Also brought something in Rob. Hit enter. Uh, we take the union of all these things, and you can see it really generates quite a large query here, but uh, it is, it will run, it is correct. Uh, and I can show you more later, I won't leave question. Okay. Questions? Uh, <clears throat> you can derive beamable for any, uh, for any type of junior? Uh, some of certain restrictions, yes. It complains that you with uh, custom type errors if you make it. Uh, okay, well, uh, how do you handle some types? Uh, well, we don't. <laughs> I mean, uh, so like some backend support JSON, Postgres supports full class JSON. Yeah, you know, from JSON instance, uh, being Postgres supports marshaling that in database. But I mean, yeah, that's a SQL limitation. Uh, do you support selecting like a subset of fields or do all your select queries select the full? Like all columns. Yeah, so uh, I pointed out that uh, the queue, queue query type is monadic, 
So yeah, we'll use that now. It's fine. Okay. Or whatever. How ideal is the generating SQL? Like, does it make really complicated ones like Opali does? Or no. are they like. No, it doesn't do what Opali does. <laughs> uh, so I will show you one of our things that I'm really into is having good documentation. Uh, so we have documentation online. Here, uh, if you look at the user guide, we support, uh, we show you all the SQL generated. I'm trying to find something more. Uh, well, it's not as complicated as SQL is. It's much more straightforward. Um, How do you generate that awesome documentation? <laughs> uh, I use make docs uh, with a custom markdown extension to run the Haskell queries. So these aren't actually what Team produces. These aren't what a copy and paste would be like right on it. How do you deal with the ID? Because like, if you want to insert it, you don't know the ID yet, right? So, have so uh, like I said, we use a F parameter. Uh, when you put it as identity, it requires that each field, in order to make it not a total, you have to give it a Haskell value. So you're right, you wouldn't be able to have unknown. However, if you put F as Q expert, which is the type of SQL expressions, uh, you can set it to default. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that is a table that has yet to be computed, which makes sense. That's exactly what it is, table whose expressions have not yet been computed. Send to the database, uh, Postgres has insert returning. Uh, and you get the value back as a Haskell uh, total data. So it's kind of like a follow on for my talk. Yeah. Could you do something similar where you had like an email type in Bean that um, maybe like came out of the database with a Spark Constructor function? Yeah. Um, so yeah, you could uh, have a new type and you instantiate a few class type classes to marshal the code back and forth, and you can fail if it doesn't match uh, your type. Okay, well thank you very much everyone.